What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new Gears 5 video, so let's get into it. So in today's video guys, we're going to be doing an ending explained, and that revolving solely around Gears 5, some major spoilers in Gears 5. So if you haven't beaten Gears 5 at this point, I would highly recommend finishing the game and then come back and watch this video. Gears 5 also, guys, is just one of the most expansive Gears games I've ever played, and it's obviously a semi-open world game. They did an incredible job, obviously, not only with the graphics, but even just the, the storytelling in it, but the ending, guys, is what got a lot of people that are huge fans of Gears of War talking about this ending, and I thought that I would give you guys my perspective and kind of try to explain it to the best of my ability, and then we can have a real conversation about it. There was a really interesting article, guys, that I was reading from Eurogamer and from Connor Makar, and it explains things pretty well, so I thought that I would share it with you, and then we'll get into some of our thoughts and where the story may be going from here. So the Gears 5 ending offers a little new for the series, giving the player a decision they are forced to make that shapes the way the story unfolds. People are, of course, torn on which choice to make in Gears 5's ending, so we're going to run through the differences between both choices as well as some speculation explaining why we think one is more likely to be canon than the other. At the tail end of Act 4, Chapter 1, you must fight off waves of swarm forces with the Hammer of Dawn as you defend a beacon planted behind the Church of the Unknown. After successfully keeping them at bay is the Queen of the Swarm who emerges catching Kate, Dell, and JD off guard. Losing her Lancer and with the beacon destroyed, Kate watches as Dell and JD fail a surprise attack on the Queen, resulting in them both being strangled. This is when the choice comes into play. With only her knife at her disposal, Kate must choose between severing the Queen's grasp on either JD or Dell. You're on the clock, so a decision has to be made within a few seconds. After choosing to save one, the Queen angrily declares that Kate will have to live with her decisions before breaking the neck of whoever you didn't save. Depending on who you choose, the two Gears 5 endings play out differently. In short, whoever you decide to save, the other will die. If you choose to cut the tentacle of JD, then Dell is killed by the Swarm Queen. In the rubble of a fallen building, JD openly starts crying and lamenting the fact that his friend's dead, breaking past the tough team leader persona he usually has. It takes Kate to console him and get them out of the building before it collapses. If instead you decide that Dell is the one worth saving, JD dies with his neck broken and you find yourself in the rubble of a fallen building. This time, Dell is mourning over JD's death in a similar manner to the other ending, holding the cog tags of his friend. Again, Kate leads Dell out of the fallen building. The major difference in the endings comes with the meeting with Marcus Phoenix. If you save JD, he looks sadly over the ruined cityscape in front of him. Marcus comes up to him and puts his hand on JD's shoulder, finally fulfilling the supportive dad role and concluding the father-son subplot that started in Gears 4. If you save Dell, he and Kate give Marcus his dead son's tags. Marcus quietly and sadly mourns for his son, and when approached by the pair, pulls himself away. When Foz in the truck arrives, he again walks up with a cocky line before realizing what's happened and falling silent. This version actually has an additional scene with Foz and Marcus in the front seats of the vehicle where Marcus can be seen quietly looking at his son's tags before telling Foz to drive. The rest of the final act is largely the same as the alternative version with the only difference coming in at the end where Marcus can be seen on his own looking out into the city. This time Dell walks up and attempts to console him with Marcus not pulling away like last time. Again he group huddles up Kate is called over, and the ending remains the same. So a lot of you may be wondering which Gears 5 ending is canon, and obviously, we're not going to know this, guys, until Gears 6 releases, probably in a couple of years. We can, of course, speculate up to this point. Developer The Coalition hasn't said which Gears 5 ending is canon. There are good arguments for both, but overall, we reckon it makes the most sense if JD survives at the end of Gears 5. I do agree with this. For one... All of Dell's subplots are wrapped up neatly by the end of the game. His detachment from JD and Foz 
after learning about their actions at Settlement 2 is the reason he distances himself from the two. But after JD and Foz come back in Act 3, they seem to resolve their differences. He supports Kate through her journey of self-discovery and ends the game with all outstanding issues with other characters sorted out. In his ending, he remains as a supporting friend to Marcus, but that's kind of all he's got going for him. On the other hand, JD's ending does a lot for the character development of not only himself, but Marcus too. For the last two games, the two characters have been butting heads, almost as if they're in some kind of grouchy, stubborn, muscle-flexing contest. With JD alive, you see the side of both characters crumble, setting up future games with both characters moving past bravado. I'd rather see a version of JD that doesn't stupidly leap into dangerous situations to try and show up his dad, and a version of Marcus who doesn't just need to be a grumpy old soldier. The decision between which was canon lands on Marcus Phoenix's shoulders. One of the endings resolves his issues with his son and sets him up with room to grow as a character, while the other has him retreating back into the Marcus we already know. While there's a special place in my heart for the old Marcus, it's clear that the developers at the Coalition want to move the series in a new direction, which is why we reckon JD survives. So guys, I overall agree with this article as far as the ending is concerned and the ending explained. I do think that as far as canon is concerned, when you make decisions like this or if the game developers decide to give the player the choice that could very much so change or turn the tide of canon in Gears, in, in the future of Gears of War, I, I certainly think that there obviously is going to be canon here, and I do think it's going to be that JD does survive. I don't know how they're going to explain that, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless. And obviously, I would say in the next two Gears of War games, it's going to be really Marcus, Kate, most likely JD, as well as the rest of the crew going after, obviously, going after the Queen, going Going after the rest of the Locust Horde. And I would say, guys, in Gear 6, they're going to get one step closer. And then in Gear 7 is probably when they finalize and are able to take out the Locust Horde once and for all. It should be interesting. One of my biggest questions is, are we going to be playing Kate Diaz in the next couple of Gears of War games? Which it seems like they are certainly planning on us kind of taking the helm with her as the main character. I do want to play JD again. I also want to play Marcus again in the series. But nonetheless, guys, I'm really excited to see where the series goes. Because after they utilized the Hammer of Dawn, it seemed like, yeah, sure, they took out part of the, the you know, the Locust Horde. But at the same time, there is still a substantial amount of story to be, to be told. And it left it extremely open. So I'm very excited about it. I think, though, that the ending is setting us up for, obviously, Gear 6 and then into Gear Gear 7. It answers the question though, I made a video earlier on before Gears 5 released about is Kate a villain in Gears 5 and it seemed like they were teasing us like she was maybe going to become the next Swarm Queen, but it does look like that is not going to be the case. It, like we find out that her mother is still alive, but her mother is the next Swarm Queen, which was a very interesting twist on the story. And so now, moving into Gear 6, it looks like Kate now has really fully accepted that she has to go, that it, the Queen is no longer her mother and that she has to go after her and take out the Locust Horde once and for all. It'll be interesting to see how they decide to do that as we move into Gear 6. But nonetheless, I think it's going to be awesome. And I really think that the Coalition is moving in a great direction for Gears of War. Because we have this, you know, semi-open world in Gears 5, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a full-blown open world in Gears 6, along with multiple side missions, as well as an ex even bigger expansive story and lore to Gears of War. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think about the ending of Gears 5 and where do you guys think the story is going and which ending do you think is going to be canon in Gears 6? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new, stay positive, and as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.